Okay, well, uh, thanks for taking a look at this gate ball scenario uh, player. The idea about this is that you can set up positions and then actually sort of play the shots and uh, see what sort of sequence was the best line of play. So um, after putting the URL in, uh, click go. And after a couple of seconds, after we make connections to the database server, um, things, are, things are good to go. Um, what you'll notice is that there's a 2D big map of the of the lawn or the court. Uh, there's a scoreboard timer. Uh, so these are the ball selections and their scores and player attributes up here. Then there's a sort of 3D view of the of the lawn. This little window here is going to record the shots, and this is a little bit of a control panel down here. Now to play a shot, um, what you do is you basically always playing towards a target. So this target here is what you're always shooting towards. And if you're a very good player, your shot will always go towards that target and will go the exact distance of that target as well. Now you can see the aim line on the three dimensional view there on the right hand side, but you can also switch it on on the two dimensional view as well. The reason why it's toggled on and off on that two-dimensional view is that sometimes you might want to just set, use the software to set up a scenario and you don't want the line there. So to play the shot, um, you get the target into the position that you want and you press stroke and the ball uh, is played. And it hit the leg of the, the gate, uh, that's fine. We scored the point, so I'm just going to click score on here and we've got one extra thing up up there and then we're going to play our next shot into this sort of position by gate two now oh and we hit it a bit hard um it says that r1 is cross line two so what we're going to do is actually click this button that says yeah i, I agree that r1 is out and you'll see that that's made it gray and dim anyway let's move let's activate player number two We'll move player number two into the starting grid. And what I'm going to do for player number two is I'm just going to press this striker to target button here. What that does is it means that now I'm on the three dimensional view, I'm looking beautifully down at what the striker can see. I can zoom that in and out using this little toggle here, um, but that's a pretty good view of it. That's about where I want to go. So I'm going to hit stroke and straight through. And I'm going to play my next shot um, up to here. Uh, I'm going to be a bit more cautious this time because that last one went out and that one looks OK. So that's how you play the shots. Uh, that's how you can score um, either by pressing the score button here or I can just click on the scoreboard. If I find I make a mistake, I can um, press the shift key down and that will send it the other way. So if I mistakenly increase the score beyond what it was meant to be, then uh, that's easy to correct. Um, we talked about how uh, if I've got, if I activate player number three, I'm looking between the target, uh, the, the striker and the target. Um, you can, if you want, um, look from the top. Um, you can, if you want, uh, drag the, the camera around to go to different places. So here I'm above gate three, uh, up here I'm having a look to see what's happening by gate two, um, and I can use the arrow keys to rotate that view as well. So let's go back to stri strike as a target, and let's play this stroke, and oh gosh, that took a big kick off the, off the hoop, and it's gone completely out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it back if you press the shift key and the, the button for activating the ball, then it will actually return it back to the corner of the lawn. That's useful if you've just done an agari, of course, and you've, you've pegged out. So one thing that um, you're probably wondering is how do you do a spark? So let's imagine, let's, let's bring ball number four into the play. And I'm just going to play ball four quite conservatively uh, through there. And then I'll play the next shot. Now you'll notice that I can't play the next shot 
until uh, the balls have stopped moving. Uh, so once the balls have stopped moving, the stroke button is activated again. And the, only when the balls have stopped moving can you do something. Now, if for some reason the balls don't stop moving and sometimes um, they just spin on their axes and, and they have this angular velocity which you can't get rid of, just press this stop all balls button here and that will sort it out. Uh, so if, you, if any at any moment you find that you're not able to continue, the stop all balls button is your friend. Now, ball number five has been through there. I'm now going to play a shot. Ball number five, let's aim it really dead eye at this, this yellow ball. Stroke, and it hit. And it um, it's recorded here. The R5 has hit W4. So what we'll do is we'll take the touch. So touch W4. And if we go and zoom in on that, what you'll see is that four is now next to five. And as we rotate the target around, we're rotating the touched ball four around five. So if I spark this, if I now hit spark, the four will go out of play, which is what we wanted to do. So um, let's mark W4 as out. Um, so um, we've done the scoring, we've done um, the sparking. Uh, one extra thing to point out is that each player has uh, attributes. So you can make it so that the players have particular aim errors or distance errors. So at the moment, all of our players have, have just got a little bit of error on their shots. Let's make number six, uh, which is going to play next, let's make number six a really um, developing player, um, someone who, whose error rate is quite large. So let's make their, their aim error you know, five degrees variation, plus or minus. And let's make their distance error quite big as well. So we submit that. Now you can tell that's saved because if we go back in, it's, it's, um, it's, it's recorded it. What we're expecting to see now when we play this shot is a bit more variation. Of course, it may not turn out that way because variation is <laughs> what it is. I mean, it may well be that they play a perfect shot, but let's see what happens. Well, you can see that they did actually have a little bit of left handedness about that. They didn't make the and they didn't make the gate. So um, changing each player, building a team of different players of different standards is um, is is really easy. Um, the only other thing to mention is that we haven't started the, the game clock. You obviously start that here. That will start tick, ticking down. Um, when you click the, a particular player, like number seven, you can see that the shot clock is kicking down. So number seven plays the shot and nothing, you know, they didn't make the hoop. So we'll, we'll, we'll bring that back there. Now, as soon as I press number eight, the shot clock starts again. So we're, we're getting that 10 second shot clock. Now 10 seconds is very, very fast for this because you, you know it takes a while to get used to the controls. You can change the shot clock so that it will um, it, be a longer time. So I've changed this to 20 seconds. This is now counting down from 20 seconds. Similarly, you can make the game time um, a bit shorter as well. Useful if you're doing a particular scenario. Now you've probably also noticed hidden behind here is this uh, load button. What that implies is that you can take a game back to particular positions. So for example, if we want to go back to where uh, this shot here, we can press reset and now we're back to where that particular shot was. So we can wind the clock back to a, uh, a previous position. We can also load up a, a position from someone else's game. So if I click load and I know, for example, that match 812, uh, shot number two is an interesting position. So I put that in, press get. And this is a position where it's actually ball number one to play. And you have to decide what you're going to do uh, with ball number one. Uh, this is a position I just took off um, John Park's um, discussion forum. Um, but you can imagine that if you've got an interesting position in your game, like 
match 826 and you want one of your friends to say what would you do in this situation it's very easy to do that okay we'll have fun uh, the the link is get, uh, up here and to basically play the game again you just hit enter because then that will just cause it to to reload so there isn't a very glamorous way of going out what I'll finish up with saying though is that uh, these people here have been an immense help in the development of the game so far and hopefully by making this open source we'll get more and more people involved and turn it into something really good all right thanks for watching